We're going to do some testing on the Ramshot TAC 168 AMAX trainer loads for the 308 trainer gun that I'm shooting. Hey Travis, you know what we haven't done in a while? 308 loading. Let's do it. Gavin Gay here from UltimateReloader.com. I'm back with Travis Fox. Travis, thank you for joining us. Hi Gavin, thanks for having me. So this video is a little bit ironic because we just did choosing a PRS cartridge for competition and there was one cartridge that we just sort of anecdotally talked about but we didn't even cover it, which was 308. Yeah, we put the picture up there as a reference but we never actually talked about it. So let's talk about the 308. Yeah, so you've got a particular scenario here in mind. We've got some new gear to talk about. Yep. Give us the background here. So here's the deal. <clears throat> I like running a 308 for a trainer rifle. Mm -hmm. Lots of reasons. Why? You get more recoil, you have to work on your recoil management skills. Mm -hmm. You get a bullet that honestly doesn't have the best wind beating skills over some of these fast high BC bullets. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn to read the wind better. So what better thing to do than train with a 308? Mm -hmm. Work on your wind reading skills, work on your recoil management skills, and kind of beat yourself up a little bit, but it makes you better. Yeah, here's why I like the idea, is we've got lightweight 6.5 PRC hunting rifles, right? Yeah. So specifically working on recoil management is a skill, especially shooting off of barricades and other hunting-like shooting setups. That just feels really beneficial to me, given where we're going with our hunting rifles, right? Yep. Shedding the weight, we got a lot of steep terrain around here. So multiple birds with one stone. The other thing that you mentioned when we were setting all this gear up is barrel life. True, the very true story. Yeah. The 308, you're gonna get thousands of rounds of barrel life out yep. of one of these, and you're not gonna burn up your competition barrel. What, what better gun to use? Absolutely, you know? yeah. And we have a bunch of components around as well. I have a ton, and I mean a ton, of military 308 brass. Yep. And as a follow on, we got more 308 content coming up. I'm gonna show kind of more of the bulk precision reloading aspect of things. We've got the Dillon CP2000 for a dedicated brass prep machine. That's gonna help with that military brass. Yep. Trimming with the Dillon trimmer and so on and so forth. Then I'm gonna show the caliber conversion over to 308 on the RL1100. We're gonna be able to crank out a lot of ammo. And my scenario for that is, shooting a bunch of AR-10 stuff. Sounds fun. At range, yeah. So this, the, these stories will be counterparts to each yep. other. Okay. I wanna show on the, we're gonna show eventually the bulk reloading stuff, how you can actually do some precision ammo on a progressive eventually too. Yeah, the BL-550 for, for example. Yes, exactly. Precise powder charges, and we're getting good bullet concentricity with the, both the 550C yep. and the, the BL-550. I absolutely. absolutely love that. Okay, new gear. You guys have already seen the Area 419 Zero Press, uh, but we have some more Area 419 gear here that we just got into the shop that we are excited to try. The funnel kit and a bunch of different loading bolt locks, right? We've got the 223, we got the 308, and we have the Magnum case rim yep. size loading blocks. These things are just, you know, it's Area 419. This stuff is very nice. I love the kind of beefy feel of it. Mm -hmm. You put it down on here, this thing's not going to go anywhere. It's going to stay in place. They got these nice rubber feet on the bottoms and uh, they just kind of tend to stay in place. They don't slide around. They're not rolling all over the place. The, the machining quality on this is very high. The cartridges fit quite nicely and snugly. They're mm -hmm. very stable in the block. Chamfered holes yeah. so that it kind of guides the case in. Very high details. Yep. The funnel kit, uh, when I was playing around with it when we first got it, very nice threading. Uh, and the threading has an advantage, right? We have other funnels where the, the adapters for each cartridge kind of press in. Yep. And you, there, there can be a little bit of gap there, yep. right? At the very end Definitely. where they mate up and, yes. you know, ball powder can get clogged in there. These, the way they screw positively means that there's no gap and they fit perfectly on the case mouth of a 6 or a 6.5, depending on, you know, which of the color-coded uh, adapters you screw on there. Yeah, the funnel has the ribs, ridging, whatever you want to call it. Striations, striations. Guides, yeah. <laughs> and when you're doing this, it just helps the powder to flow better down into the case. The Each one of these cartridge adapters fits quite nicely on here. Yeah, and once it's just very good fit. There's no, you're not gonna get any leakage of powder right. anywhere. 
again, a premium product. These aren't cheap, but if you have high standards and you want to spend some money for a lifetime tool, this is definitely yeah. great stuff. This is this is stuff that will last forever. Okay. So why don't you take us through the steps that you've already performed here to get the brass up to its current state, which is sized, annealed, primed, all that kind of stuff. We're going to show the powder charging and the bullet seating, but but walk us through the equipment you used and the different processes to get to this point. Okay, so the very first thing that we're doing right off the bat with brass, one of the best things you can do is you want to kneel your brass with your amp mark two. And that is just going to start the process out for you. Mm -hmm. You get the best consistent consistency. Shoulder bump. You get yep. everything just becomes much better and easier. The brass shoots better. It extends the life. Extends That's another life. key part of yeah. it. Yep. So a kneel. And then we come over to the zero press. We're using the RCBS decapping and sizing die. This is full length sizing, mm -hmm. by the way. I always full length on these competition or any of the bolt rounds. Mm -hmm. uh, I've tried neck sizing, but I've always gone back to full length. Yeah. So we're doing that, all the brass, and then we're- And you're using the Wilson case gauge to drop yes. it in there, or make sure it's down flush or slightly yep. below. Yep. Make sure your trim length is good. Yep. Make sure it fits in there right. Yep. And the other Wilson product that we're using on here is the Mandel die. So mm. a, even mm. after I do the full length sizing, I love using uh, Wilson Mandel dies because mm -hmm. I just get a consistency on the neck tension yep. then. Uh, the zero press is super easy to rotate these around with what you want to do. And this is new brass and, and my process is actually very sim similar. I always uh, mandrel brand new brass. Yes. Sometimes I'll anneal depending on the hardness or what it is that I'm doing. You know, I might anneal after the first firing or something like that. But yeah, uh, the mandrel provides a level of consistency that seems to be, to me, to be better than just a ball running yeah. through, yeah. you know, Definitely. the case neck. Now, some people kind of go back and forth on what I do next. Mm -hmm. Some people do this before I, I do this, but after I do the mandrilling, then I chamfer the neck. Mm -hmm. uh, some people have gone and done that first, but I, I feel like after you get it mandrilled and you know it's round, then you do the chamfer. Mm -hmm. And I just like that. It just makes the bullet seating a little bit easier. And That's a really good point, because in brand new brass, you'll often get the slight denting, right? Not mm -hmm. a problem. The bullet no. would, would smooth that out, no problem. But you're not going to get that perfect chamfer right. unless you... Now, after this has been fired one time and it hasn't mm -hmm. been like stepped on at the range or anything <laughs> like that, um, actually, you don't need to chamfer it, but you could chamfer it then before you do the, mm -hmm. the sizing and, and all yep. that. So after we get the chamfering done, we step over to Primal Rights has the competition primer seater. And it's really nice, very good seating on the primer, mm -hmm. uh, perfect depth which has been a bit of discussion here recently on some yep. of the channels, uh, comes out great. We get them all back in our loading block, and then we're going to start our process of using the RCBS Matchmaster, the Ramshot Tack. Mm -hmm. Why do we use Ramshot Tack? Because this stuff flows like water through these things, and you just get like perfect, perfect. And if you develop a load you really like with your precise control here, and you want to move that over to a progressive, yeah. You could just take that tack and it's going to probably go pl within plus or minus yeah. 0.1 approximately yeah. in one of those powder measures. Now, the extruded powders work awesome in, in this. Sure. But when you start using these ball powders like the tack and some of the other ones in the progressive presses, the powder flow through those things is... You get more, you get more variation if you have a, a long a stick powder yeah. or medium exactly. stick powder. Okay. So next, we're going to take a look at charging. Charging time. So we're using the RCBS Matchmaster. It's accurate to 0 0.04 grains. It's got different speeds. It's got different options. Show me what we're doing here for, for charging. So if you look on the display here, we've set the powder dispensing for this type of powder. Mm -hmm. uh, I set it on four and powder. We hit the grains on here. It's ready to go. 42 uh, grains. 42 grains of tack and our 168 Hornady. Let it run up here, trickling up. So the trade-offs here are you can dispense really, really fast if you're willing to go with 0.1 or 0.2 variation. Or if you want to hold a tighter tolerance on your powder charges up to 0 0.04 grains of accuracy, you slow things down and you go in match mode. There's a standard mode and a match mode. So you have a lot of different options with, with the dispenser. If you look on the display here, you can see right up here, up on the upper left of the screen, the match mode. So we got 0 0.04. I call that acceptable for a trainer load. Yep. 
So we're just going to keep letting that dispenser run while we are loading up some bullets now. So then we're coming over with our powder in our case. Grab our bullet. I've already got this set for the length that I want. Mm -hmm. Coming out. Nice little chubby. What is, what is your cartridge overhaul length approximately on this? Uh, I set these so they just run smoothly out of a mag, honestly. I'm not chasing mm -hmm. the lands. I'm not doing anything. A little any... under 2.8 then? Yeah. 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 It's, I'd have to measure them exactly. Gotcha. To let you know. Okay. But my, my biggest thing is I want that to function well out mm -hmm. of the mag, mm -hmm. function well into the bolt, and not have any issues with that. Nice, 42 on the nose. 42 right there. Okay, oh, well, we're gonna sit back and watch while you load the rest of these. This is... Get this box filled up. Mm -hmm. We'll run up to the ridge line and do a little shooting. Shooter ready? Ready. Go. Shooter ready? Ready. Go. All right, well, that was pretty fun, Gavin, huh? Yeah, I've got our new targets up. Thanks yeah. for going and pounding those in the ground. That's yeah. really fun to be able to shoot now down and got a couple more 200-yard targets in the mix shooting off the tripod. Yeah. That I makes kinda, it fun. Kind of wanted to do that, you know, get these kind of more angle shots. That one target's mm -hmm. kind of small, but mm -hmm. it, you're shooting off the two vets QDT tripod, getting down on those, some of those angles. It's a uh, mix for some interesting shooting. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. It's a really good hunting scenario too. Very. We've got tall grass up there. You know, we've got rock chucks, we've got coyote, the tripod. I'm looking forward to getting better with the tripod because that just gets you up and out of that grass and, yeah. you know, on target and it whatnot. Makes for, uh, it makes for all your shooting positions, no matter where you are, it makes it more versatile because you can just really kind of do what you want with it mm -hmm. and get in the position that you need to shoot over objects, down objects, <laughs> up objects. <laughs> You don't have to be trying to mess around on the ground. Yeah. This is a great example of winter life here at the Ultimate Reloader Ranch. I was running the side-by-side, -side, plowing snow up the Jeep road. It's a little bit hairy and precarious, but I guess that's <laughs> the way I like it, right? And then up there on the ridge line, just totally, totally beautiful. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the rifle? Okay, so this is one of my Bighorn Origin actions from Zermatt. Uh, I've just got a factory Savage barrel on it. Uh, well, and that's an interesting combination. Remington 700 footprint. Yep. Remington 700 trigger compatibility, but Savage, Savage barrel system. Yep. It, you know, it just runs well. Uh, mm -hmm. I just wanted to keep it simple. I've got a few of these Savage barrels laying around from mm -hmm. old actions. So the 308 barrel lasts for quite a while. I've had this barrel since brand new. Mm -hmm. but shoots just fine. I've got the EC tuner brake on it, which is a very good tool to use for dialing in your load for accuracy and it works really well for reducing muzzle recoil yeah um, which even though we're trying to train on this it's still a good tool to have yep uh, we've run the xlr element full length arca rail magnesium chassis we have the weight kit on it yep i've got the athlon midas tack 5 to 25 on it which is a great scope for dialing i mm -hmm. uh, love the reticle on that scope yeah, it's really clear too. Pretty, pretty fun shooting gun. Uh, the, the weight system on that does take some recoil out, mm -hmm. um, and it also makes it kind of heavy to manipulate and get in position. But it's really kind of feels like you're shooting a match gun with mm -hmm. it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, that was a lot of fun, and this gives you kind of a an overview, kind of high level view of Travis's reloading process for the trainer ammo. You know, we've got more training stuff coming up. 
which will be good. I'm not going to mention it yet. Just stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed. It's going to be really fun. Yeah, we're going to be building on all of this process of getting ready for PRS type competition, what we're doing here, uh, and then we're going to be moving into that as the year goes on, as we come into this new year. So we're having you guys stay tuned, watch us. If you guys think of any other things you want us to show, please let us mm -hmm. know. Uh, and we want to be able to demonstrate what we're doing and we want to help you guys kind of develop your process. So let us know what you see. Our question for you, what are you doing with 308? Are you reloading it? What are you reloading it on? What are you using to reload it for components? And what are you shooting it out of? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not gonna wanna miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting. Thank you.